When you think of digital notes, you probably think notes, folders, pages, links. In other words, you think of text, but there's been a quiet revolution going on in note taking. See, digital notes have a flaw. When they're out of sight, they're also out of mind. Unlike physical spaces, most digital notes don't have any kind of spatial memory. A digital note isn't placed over here or living over there or behind that. A digital note is just in the app somewhere. I've been living in Evernote for the last seven years, but lately I've been exploring new note-taking frontiers. And today I'm checking out Milanote. I'm going to design a building a second brain style Milanote workspace step-by-step -step from scratch. Then I'm going to share my top three visual note-taking practices I can see myself using in my own second brain in the future. So how does Milanote work? Once you sign up, you'll immediately notice that you're in a massive open canvas view with nothing to see for miles. Don't panic. Just click on the upper left or double click anywhere to start making notes. A note in Milanote looks like a floating box you can move around and add text to. You can format that text in a variety of ways. Add a color or colored bars or pick a different kind of note from the sidebar, such as an images note or a bunch of different types of media. But the main way of organizing Milanote is something called boards. When we think of notes apps like Evernote or Obsidian, we think of folders, which are pretty much just containers to put similar notes in to help you find them again. And if you want, you can put relevant folders inside those folders. The information lives in the notes you create and the folders exist to store and organize the notes. But you also have apps like Notion that combine the idea of a note and a folder into something called a page. A page has information. It's a traditional note, but it can also store other pages by creating a new page inside that page. Milanote boards are kind of like pages in Notion. When you create notes on a board, it stores that information. So the board itself is one big note, but you can create new boards inside those boards like a folder. But there's one key difference from other apps. You've got a crazy amount of freedom. Instead of a single vertical space, outline or fixed columns, your information can live anywhere on the board or even be stacked up on top of itself. So let's create our first board by dragging it out of the toolbar on the left. Obviously, I'm Tiago Forte, so my first board will be called projects. And next, we'll do areas, resources, and archives. As you can see, the boards are auto-assigned a color and an icon to match the board based on its name. But let's go over to our left toolbar and recolor these so they look extra appealing. Nice. I like this. Much better. And then just for fun, we'll left-click, drag to select all four of these icons, now right-click, and select connect with lines. And now, if we move these boards around, they'll still stay connected. So we have four boards that are ready to put content inside of them a projects board for the things I'm actively working on that have a clear end goal, an areas board for the important stuff in my life I need to keep track of and maintain, a resources board for anything that might be useful in the future, and an archives board for things I don't expect to look at again, but wanna keep around just in case. Now, these look just like folders right now, but since this is a visual space, I could add all kinds of stuff here, like a note about what each of these mean or images that get me excited to open these up. But for now, I think what I'll do is just use the draw feature on the left to remind myself of my prioritization here. For projects, I'm going to check these weekly. These are important to keep top of mind and refresh regularly. My areas I'll review monthly or whenever it feels important. Resources, I'll only review as needed. And archives or storage. Okay, I think we're ready for the next layer. Let's double click on the projects board. Now we're inside a new board. If I wanna to get to the previous one, by the way, I can hit command and left bracket or forward bracket to jump back and forth or look at the top of my screen to see more information about where the board I'm looking at lives. So one way to add a little more structure to a board is creating columns wherever you like on your board. Let's click on columns in the left toolbar and drag one out into our space. We can click into the column to add a title. I'm calling this one active projects. If you're familiar with para, projects are anything you're working toward with a clear goal and a time to complete it by. So let's make this extra 
extra clear and create a big visual reminder, a new note up here. And we can color it so it stands out a bit. And then if we click on the note and hover on the right corner, we can click this arrow to create a connector line between these notes. You can change the ends of the connector to be an arrow or a dotted line, but I think I'm gonna leave it as a normal line. Right now, this column is a bit empty. So let's add a project here. We'll create another board and drag it into the column so that it clicks into place right here. One of my projects right now is tracking our YouTube video performance. So let's call this UTM tracking, parentheses, YouTube conversions. Once we click into this project board, we can start adding content. So I've added a column here because really the UTM project is being spearheaded by our video producer, Gio. So I added his proposal and some of the details here as well as a cool image of him. As part of his proposal, Gio shared this article. So I'll go ahead and add that onto the board. By the way, whenever you copy and paste a link, it's stored in this unsorted area on the right side, which you can close or open. This is a good way to just hold on to notes that you aren't sure where you want to place yet. Once it's here, I can drag it out into the board and then connect it to the initial proposal. You'll see that it automatically pulls in a thumbnail and summary too. Of course, in the process of reading through the article, I used highlighting to note the most important points. I'm going to do a form of progressive summarization and grab the most important highlights and put them on my board, either as text so I can edit it or just screenshots of the page that I copy and paste into the board to do this extra fast. And I noticed there's a UTM builder link in that article. So I'll pull that out here as well, since that's an important resource if we move forward. Additionally, let's add a few action items. I'll go to the toolbar and drag out this item, which creates a to-do note. Now I've added a few action items from Geo and from the article I just read. I can leave comments and tag others to help if they have access to my board. Or I can even just share a public version of this and enable commenting. I can just lay out the information in an intuitive way and even leave little notes or guidelines for myself or a future collaborator. Let's go back to our projects board and add some more content. As we start to add projects, we might start to get a little too ambitious or not ambitious enough. So let's add another note to remind me of my philosophy of projects. Tiago's rule, aim for 10 to 15 active projects. These are projects I'm committed to completing in the near term. This is a good reminder as I'll actually be able to see visually the amount of projects I have here as I add them. And there's this nice little reminder up here of the number of boards I have in this column. So it's even faster to evaluate how many projects I have in motion. I'm going to go ahead and create the rest of my Kanban as well as a few more projects. You'll see there's a sequence here from future projects to upcoming projects, active projects, then completed and archived projects. To keep these categories clear, I've added little descriptions of their purpose as notes that I drag into the columns. Then whenever a project is ready to start, I can pull it from the upcoming projects. Or when a project is complete, I can move it to completed projects. Here's one I'm working on with my team, a potential reshoot of one of our courses. If you look at this, we have a high level visualization of our annual calendar and where this project could fit in. I've dropped in images of a blank calendar and then used the draw tool to outline key dates and timings. I could easily add more details for each calendar event here or whatever else is relevant for the project as it develops. Let's go back to our homepage now and click into our areas. Here's how I've set up my areas. You'll notice it's similar to the projects, but it's a lot more free form. Instead of a clear sequence that projects move through, areas are grouped more by interests and type and they're meant to inspire me or remind me of my priorities, not keep me laser focused on what I have to do immediately. It's more about habits and daily practices, a kind of mindfulness. If I click into an area, there might be structure and specific items or things to manage, or it might just be visual inspiration or even a workflow of how to think about a particular aspect of my life. It's about the intersection of creativity and productivity where those two meet and complement one another. By the way, you can put one board in multiple places. All you have to do is right click it and select create a shortcut for this board. This will allow you to put a relevant project in both your active projects board and then also have it accessible under an area. This helps out when you think something should be in multiple spots at once. After using Milanote, here are the three features I find most interesting about its visual note-taking philosophy. First, I love the combination of a free form structure on a page level while structure enabled on a full 
boulder level. In apps like LogSeq and Obsidian, sometimes there's not enough structure. It's free form, but it takes work to organize things. Whereas in apps like Notion or Evernote, there's so much structure that you have to do significant pre-planning. Milanote is a great balance of the best of both worlds. Second, ease of sharing with external collaborators. It's very easy to add collaborators or share a public version of the boards you're working on. It's instantaneous, has a notification system, and feels great. Third, in general, visual formatting makes note-taking much more accessible to others in the first place. Visual organization makes things so much more digestible and more inspirational for you or for others. And it's clear that features are only added to Milanote when they work and are built into the product at a deep level, never just hacked on to increase the feature set. So if you'd like to check out Milanote, go ahead and click the link in the description and get started organizing your visual notes today. Thanks for watching and good luck on building your very own second brain.